This is Wallace's interview series, episode four. I'm sitting here with Doc and Natalia. Welcome. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Stephanie. Um, Doc and Natalia and I had become acquainted. We had some mutual clients, and we were introduced. They were having a lot of success with Dr. Natalia. She has a very vast background, um, and we've become very friendly. We actually train together. Most of you, my viewers know, I'm massage therapist, training. I have about two decades of experience doing what I do, and I've met a lot of different healthcare providers. And Dr. Natalia is definitely one of the shining stars of the, of the people that I've met throughout the years. Um, so I'm looking forward to this interview. While we train, we also speak about, about many different uh, things in health. The, it's unbelievable the amount of things that she has turned me on to and enlightened me about and heightened experiences about different types of um, medicine um, from around the world, um, which is very helpful because different countries have different types of ways that they view and their different philosophies as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Natalia a little bit. Give, this, just give me a little introduction about your background so the viewers can get to know you a little bit. Right, thank you, Stefan. Um, yes, so we trained and we got introduced to Stefan and he's actually an excellent trainer. Keeps me on track with his strict regimen, right? So um, it is beneficial to work with a professional and Stefan is definitely a professional, very knowledgeable of the stuff that he does. And once we start uh, working out together, we discuss things that I do and he does and we find out that we could mutually could help our clients if we do work together because yes it's important to follow a very uh, strict and organized regimen exercise wise but at the same time um, it's good to work on overall have like a holistic approach to a client which um, I implement in my own practice I'm a certified integrative uh, medicine practitioner I do have a background in um, Western medicine been in the medical field for over 18 years and I'm also certified Chinese herbologist, which gives me a perspective from Eastern medicine as well. So when I work with my clients, I use approaches and pull the knowledge from both sides. So what does it mean? Integrative medicine means combination of Western medicine and Eastern medicine combined. Um, my journey to health and wellness and kind of holistic approach is a long one. I actually wrote a book titled Great Health book, and Wellness for Busy Women and it's an international bestseller being sold over 24 countries at the moment. It's a guide to um, busy professionals, busy women, how to lead a healthy lifestyle while you're taking care of the family, while you're working full time, while you're enjoying your life. And it's not an easy journey. It wasn't easy for me to uh, follow a healthy lifestyle, how to eat healthy, cook healthy while you're busy doing yes. everything else, how to introduce uh, exercise in your busy life, how to introduce healthy nutrition in your busy life, how to sleep um, so your body has enough rest and have enough resources for the next day to wake up and actually have the energy to do stuff that we like to do and enjoy our life. So book has uh, four parts in it. First part starts with mind and body approach. Um, our mind controls our body and kind of if you're not ready for change, you might not be able to adapt all the changes. So mind-body connection is a strong one. Um, next chapter talks about body, hormonal imbalances, uh, stress, how it affects our body, how to keep our body healthy, how to make sure that we have a hormonal imbalance in the body. Next chapter talks about um, actually implementing um, all those changes in lifestyle, relationship issues, and um, self-esteem and kind of how to be healthy and at the same time self-confident woman and the last chapter focuses on transformation how to implement all the knowledge that person who reads the book acquires and implement it in the lifestyle and i have easy to do steps how to implement exercise in uh, your daily routine, how to uh, implement healthy lifestyle choices, how to change your house and make it more cleaner, where to find food that's organic and clean, and a, a lot of details and actually step-by-step -step approach how to actually live that healthy lifestyle and enjoy your life to the fullest 
while you're busy doing everything else in your life. Sure. I mean, being in New York, we're inundated by so many, you know, overwhelmed almost at times, especially being in New York City. And um, definitely help people find some harmony within it. Right. And um, you've helped some of my clients that I've trained. Sometimes I always, I've always felt that, you know, weight loss and stuff, I've, I've always felt very strong about this. Um, no exercise ever really makes up for improper eating. Proper eating is where the weight loss happens. They have to eat right, but sometimes there's other things in there besides the eating as well. Like we speak all the time about hormonal balance and some of these other mechanisms that really don't, they go kind of wrong. And they're kind of out of the scope of what I do. I'm more on the fitness end of it, but I sometimes come across certain people I know they need a little bit, there's more, there's more pieces to that puzzle. And the blood work that you do and all the hormone stuff that you do um, is super helpful because sometimes it's secondary things that are happening behind the scenes and they're not really getting to the goals that they want to. And that's usually when I, when I introduce them to you to kind of work with them a little bit and then they're totally successful because now they have this extra thing supporting um, all the other functions of the body. If not everything's in harmony, it doesn't really happen. Right, so, so weight loss unfortunately is a very big problem, or sure. weight gain I should say, it's a very good big problem in the United States. And um, I actually did my dissertation on, I don't know if I told you, on childhood obesity. Yes. And we did a lot of research to see what are the causes of obesity, why there's so much obesity. And obviously it's not only a problem of lack of exercise. There's so much more entailed into that problem. And what I try to do when clients come to me, I try to find a reason why there's a weight gain to begin with. And it could be hormonal imbalances, it could be stress, it could be lifestyle, it could be food that we eat, or a combination of everything. Yes. So in my opinion, if we target a problem only from one perspective and do not address it holistically, we're just setting up people for failure. And that's why there's so many um, weight loss programs and weight loss diet and you see commercials on TV, sure. take this drink and you will lose 30 pounds in a month. Or um, is it something worthwhile to consider? Maybe, but Maybe. Uh, if you're not, <laughs> right, if you're not addressing the actual problem that caused weight gain, sure. that those solutions will work maybe temporarily help you to lose weight, but then you will go back to whatever weight you were. And that's unfortunately why there's so much um, inconsistency and so many weight loss programs fail because the problem that's causing weight gain is not addressed. What could cause weight gain, right? It could be hormonal, for example, person that might have a thyroid imbalance, right? If they have a sluggish thyroid that's not functioning properly, our thyroid gland is responsible for regulating our metabolism. Thyroid gland is not functioning properly, metabolism is low, sure. you might be exercising, but your body tends to actually hold on to the nutrients and instead of losing weight, person might be actually gaining weight. It could be something to do with um, imbalance of leptin and ghrelin, which is our hormones sure. that regulate our hunger mm -hmm. and regulates our satiety. It could be imbalance of improper exercise on a product nutrition. So there's so many pieces. It's like a puzzle. You're sure. collecting the puzzle and you're trying to put things together, trying to find where is the main problem is coming from and how to fix that underlying problem so you could actually address the whole situation and kind of treat person holistically and find the solution and help that person to lose sure. weight and help. Um, what I try to do in my weight loss program, first do all the testing, blood work, saliva testing, urine testing, or anything else that's necessary to actually find or pinpoint the problem. Once we find the problem, then we could work on finding the solution to the problem. So it could be detox, or we will do, if it's hormonal imbalances, try to regulate the hormones. Uh, certain supplements and vitamins. Um, put them on um, very detailed nutritional program, doable nutritional program sure. without any restriction or uh, who uh, has time to count calories. For example, I'm not a great believer in counting calories. I'm not a calorie counter Because as well. <laughs> look at it from perspective, 200 calories, it's just a number. What goes into those 200 calories, that's what makes a difference, let's say. Quality is a quality. quality food right, is you could get 200 important. calories from um, eating a donut or you could get 200 calories from eating a salad with fruits and vegetables. 
which one would you benefit more? Sure, which one's going to aid the body in right. flourishing? Because when you're eating a donut, it. it's just empty calories. It gives you tons of sugar, it gives you oils that's not healthy. Yeah. If you're eating a salad that has 200 calories, you're getting benefits, nutrients from all the vegetables and fruits, antioxidants and flavonoids, and there is much, much more. You're getting fiber sure. from it as well, right? So calories is just a number to me. Uh, I prefer to do a diet that's based on quality nutrition instead of counting sure. calories. I mean, if you want longevity, the quality of the foods is important. I mean, like, like that's actually a really good example. And that's some of the things that when I send clients to you is you educate them right. about some of these things because they mean to do well, and but they met, might have read something somewhere in some magazine or something, and they go, it's not just calories in, calories out. It's, yes. more, it's more complex than that. Um, you enlightened me on some of the other things too, like cortisol levels was super important too, right. because if these people are going to this flight or, you know, flight or flight, flight mode, and they're kind of under constant stress, and that could be from things that you, you explained to me from lack of sleep, and some of these other things, and those things are help making them hold on to the fats because their body feels like it's under a stressor, right. and the stressors are coming, it's not necessarily stress that you would think in the traditional sense, but it's the, the lack of sleep and some of the other things, environmental pollutants and foods that have certain toxins in them and so on, they're stressors and they're releasing the cortisol. Maybe you could explain a little bit of the cortisol yeah, response. The cortisol connection. Yeah. Yes, there's definitely cortisol connection with um, weight gain. And I will try to explain briefly. It's a very complex sure, mechanism. Complicated. Yes. So I tried to explain briefly. Actually, all of it is written in one of the chapters in the book. So I, I really like that chapter too. You, you I, like read the chapter. Yeah, right. I like the way you explain it. Right. So what is cortisol or what is fight or flight response that Stefan mentioned um, recently? Um, our body is designed to protect us. So uh, we do have a, something called fight or flight response. When there is an emergency, our body gets into a mode to save and protect us. And we probably developed that reflex when we used to live as in caves and uh, we had to fight off or run away from tigers and all the wild animals that were around us. What happens during a fight or flight response? Adrenaline is being produced from adrenal gland and it stimulates, it dilates um, our pupils, mm -hmm. it increases heart rate, it um, constricts the vessels, it forces our body to um, overcome that stress. And that's kind of something that to help us, you probably heard of people uh, jumping off the fences when there was an emergency or lifting heavy objects, trying to save their child or something else, right? That's the time when our body is in fight or flight mode. It's trying to um, help us to go to the crisis. Once the crisis is over, our body gets into repair mode. That's when cortisol is being produced from our adrenal gland. And what cortisol does, it stimulates our body to repair itself. It stimulates to replenish our stores of glucose, sugar, energy, or anything else that we use during that fight or flight mode. So it's more like a healing and protective hormone, cortisol, which is good when it's produced during the time of time of need recovery uh, mm -hmm. after the time of stress. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what's happening now, we don't have to lucky for us to fight off tigers or to fight off and run away from wild animals. Our body doesn't know that. So every time when our body is exposed to either emotional stress, which could be something said something nasty to you, it could be responsive to all the chemicals that we have in our environment, the food that we don't eat or lack of sleep, it doesn't recognize it as being if it's a true emergency sure. or not. We still go to mini fight or flight re response every time when our body feels like we're being threatened. Could be lack of sleep, could be stress, could be emotional, could be physical stress when we get sick. So every time there would be adrenaline re released during that time, and then our body goes into recovery mode with extra cortisol being released. So if it's happening constantly on a daily basis, eventually our body gets cortisol released constantly, doesn't recognize when it should be released, when it shouldn't be. So we kind of get into the mode when we're trying to constantly protect ourselves and storing cortisol, storing that glucose, which eventually ends up in a fatty deposit and sure. ends up and that's gaining weight. Yeah. Exactly. So, plus, if as we get older, our body is not able to metabolize things properly. So, if you're getting to the age when you're over 40, you naturally start having hormonal imbalances, plus you lead a stressful lifestyle, plus you get exposed to all the chemicals in the environment. 
all of it eventually ends up in that hormonal imbalance, then extra cortisol being produced, that tends to help us to gain weight and kind of keep it on, unfortunately. Once we have extra fatty deposit, we have that extra weight, our fat cell actually becomes as a hormone producing organs as well. It starts producing its own hormones. So it seems like it becomes a vicious cycle. It goes from one thing to another and it's very hard to break the cycle. We need to look from all the perspectives to try to help body to recover, which means if body is being attacked by all the pollution and chemicals that we have in the environment, we have to start to eliminate all those chemicals and pollution. Sure. If body is being attacked by emotional stress that a person is constantly exposed to, um, we need to work on how to um, help that person not to react to the stress that they're exposed to. What do I mean? My grandmother, who I actually dedicated the book, used to say, it's not how much stress you're giving in life, it's how much you perceive and react to that stress that will make a difference. Sure. So I that's why that to be right, true. That's why I wrote my first chapter as a mind and body collection. I'm actually talking about meditation or how to separate yourself uh, from all the emotional stress that we're being um, unfortunately bombarded with and how to separate yourself and prevent you from having that acute reaction to someone when someone said something unpleasant to you or kind of how to help you to separate yourself from all the negativity that you might be exposed to and it's very strong with mind and body connection if your mind is uh, protecting you against that emotional stress then your body won't be reacting as severely to the emotional stress that you've been dealing with so it's kind of um, a cycle that needs to be addressed from different points and that's what I usually do as you know try to address all the points it's not only coming in and checking your hormones if we're checking your hormones we need to balance them which means we have to um, more or less put you on a specific protocol for a specific nutrition regimen which means that will help you to be in a particular exercise regimen and that's when I refer them to you that's kind when of we usually work together because we need point. to work together why when somebody is under high level of stress and cortisol is being overproduced, this client first needs to stabilize their cortisol and should not be on very active exercise regimen. And, and that was something we spoke about a lot. Sometimes it's like, you know, people want to exercise and I'm like, and when I do my intake, I realize and I start realizing that some of these things are happening. I'm going, maybe exercising three times a week is really not the right. place to not be. And right. if I'm gonna do exercise things, I'm certainly not gonna do things that are gonna overstress the body. I'm certainly not gonna do explosive exercises or intervals or things. Maybe later once we identify some of these things that we're speaking right. about right now, but super important to understand the difference. And um, a lot of people in my field, trainers and coaches, they still stuck in the mindset of 20 years ago where you want to lose the weight, you got to work hard. And I'm like, not really though, because you're not really thinking synergistically about how the body works. Right. And the nutrition, the cortisol, you know, all these different things that we're talking about right now, it's about an overall wellness. I try to explain that to all my clients. You know, sometimes I have clients who are like, well, I want to add a fourth day. I'm like, absolutely not. You're like a 50 year old man and you want to lose the weight, that extra day is not going to make a difference. It's not enough time for recovery. You're overstressing your body. You're releasing too much cortisol. You're going to be in like a negative loop. You're putting yourself in a negative position by doing that. Sometimes I tell them, I have this one client, Tom, the one, the guy that you work with. He, he said to me, um, I want to add a fourth day. I says, I, I'm not adding a fourth day with you. And he says to me, why not? You don't want to make the money. I says, not about that. You're going to get hurt for one, right? right? And if I, and that extra day is going to stress you, and you're in a weight loss program. You're doing fine where you're in. If anything, I'd have you back off and spend more, concentrate more of your time and energy on the food that you're eating and the stuff that Natalia spoke with you about. When we talked about the nutrition, his nutrition was far off, and it took a long time to get him to adhere to an eating program. Once he did, the weight started getting off. He was definitely in a stress mode. He was getting up at like you know five in the morning. And he was walking in the door with his family was done eating and he was eating the foods he was eating at work were horrible all day long and when we finally figured out and we had him bringing some food to work with him not eating at the proper times and some of these things the weight really started to come off it had nothing to do with adding more activity the more activity would have released more cortisol and it would have been a negative thing yes. he had so i'm not going to go too much into his situation but there were other markers in there that we identified He's great now. He'll be with. He'll be trained with me forever now. He'll be stronger. He'll be faster, 
and he'll live a much better life. He's back to playing, you know, his golf and all the other sports that he loves doing. And that was, that's the point of why I feel what you do is so valuable and why I value that because most trainers would lose a client like that. And I say, no, I'll have that client forever because I will constantly challenge them physically and keep them moving. And now that they understand that other component, they won't just, sometimes client, I notice some trainers, they constantly have a big rotation. I don't have that. I have some of my clients I have, and you know them, you've met them. I have them for some, some of them for 10 years right. or, mo or more. And they stay with me because they know that I'm more about overall health. Right. Like people who go to my YouTube channel, they'll see all the other people that I've, I've interviewed that are on there. And sometimes most people say, there's not tons of fitness videos on there. I go, there's not tons of them. They'll be on my you know, social media, my different people doing things. But most of my, in the reason I do the interview series is because I do believe in some of how important the nutrition is and the overall health of the being that I'm working with. And I'm passionate about it and all the people that I interview are usually very passionate about their field and they're all kind of in different avenues and I felt it's really important. And that's why I felt this was an important interview because I want my people that I train to, you know, and all my newer viewers to understand what you do and why that's important. And that's one of the things that really separates what we do from most of the other people that are out there because um, I don't view them as competition, I feel them as part of my team, actually. I don't have the background that you have for some of the other people that I interview, but I certainly want to introduce my clients that I train to them because it's going to make them better and overall and they're going to succeed and ultimately that is better for my business and yours because they're going to tell all their friends, look how great I'm doing. And it's obvious. Right. I have so many people like this month was actually the month where uh, we logged in with everyone for weight loss and have like five people that are in there. They've all lost from 10 pounds to 20 pounds. They're all being all, they're all on the social right. media and they're all coming in and quite a few of them met with you. So anyway, um, in closing, I would like anyone to feel free to contact Dr. Natalia. All of her information will be in the notes in the video. Um, great book if anyone is interested. You don't have to be a busy woman to read this book. Some of the information is universal for males as well. I found a lot of interesting information in it, things I didn't know anything about and enlightened me. And um, always a pleasure. I love speaking with you. You've always been like, like one of my shining stars of people that I always feel comfortable um, my clients are meeting you. Um, they find you to be very personable and they love working with you as well. And most of them are succeeding. So that's like, it's like a no brainer for me. Well, thank you very much. Um, I like working with you as well. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I do feel that practitioners need to work together. Otherwise, um, our medical system, unfortunately, is so fragmented. When you see one doctor for sure. one problem and then see another one for another problem and then see the third one, and then you have a separate uh, exercise coach, our body doesn't work this way. No, our it, body doesn't separate our heart from our brain sure. or our liver from... It doesn't work this way. It works together. And that's, I believe, the approach that we should be using. Unfortunately, that's not happening. And that's what makes me upset. And that's why I actually went back to school and did other certification, as you're aware of, because I felt there was something missing. A miss piece of the puzzle was missing. And I couldn't figure out until I get extra education, until I um, look at it from the holistic perspective which is nutrition exercise sleep right. mind and body connection hormonal imbalances and that's my goal when client comes and see me my goal is to help them to live their life not only to live their life longer but actually enjoy the life that they're living longer it's path to longevity it's not a destination it's a journey and I would like to be a mentor a coach and their health a captain to help them through the journey that they're going through to kind of help them along the way guide them and give them enough information so they get hold of their life they become their own captains they become their own um, guide to kind of lead that healthy lifestyle and working with you actually with combined effort I think it will help them to be sure. more successful so. I always try to choose to have really you know powerful people around me to help me in all, all different types of arenas, you know, when it comes to health. I have a passion about it, and it was obvious that you had a passion about it as well. 
Um, traditional medicine is great for certain things, right. and and that's what was special too because you do those as well. Right. So you so you had a large spectrum of different right. things at your disposal, and I feel that's really important because if you go to just traditional medicine, um, and that's all they do, they believe in that one philosophy. You have many different things to choose from, and that to me that's important to be able to have options, and people want to have different, and they want to understand that there's different uh, ways to go about healing right. and um, that was something very special and that's why I felt very fortunate to meet with you and to have the interview as well and share that with everyone well welcome Dr. Natalia one of my favorite people be well